Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss a numerical of dynamically equivalent system. So the question says that the data is given for a horizontal reciprocating engine where the mass of the reciprocating pulse is given that means the mass at the piston is given which is 120 kilogram. The crank length is given. So let's say this is the crank. So R is given which is 90 mm. Speed of engine is given 600 rpm. And for the connecting rod we are given the mass. The length between the centers that means the length of the connecting rod is given. Distance of center of mass from big end is given. So big end is at the this you know crank pin. So it is something like this. So big end is at the crank pin side. So this distance A into G is given which is 180 mm. Radius of gyration is given from the center of mass which is 150 mm. You have to find the magnitude and direction of inertia torque in crank shaft when the crank has turned 30 degree from inner dead center. That means theta is given which is 30 degree. So we have written all the data which is the mass of connecting rod, mass of the reciprocating parts L which is the length of connecting rod, K radius of gyration, theta is the angle which crank makes with the line of stroke so it is 30 degree, length of crank is given small r so we can find the ratio N which is L upon r. N is given 600 rpm so we can calculate omega that is 2 pi n upon 16. Now what we are given, we are also given the distance of the center of mass of the connecting rod from the bigger end which is uh, 180 mm, right. So let's suppose that this point is A and this point is B and let's say the mass at A is MA and this distance is small a and the mass at point B is MB and the distance of B from the center of mass is small b. So we have already derived the formula to divide the mass of the connecting rod. So let's say if I want to find the mass at the connecting rod at point A. So it will be equal to. So MA is equal to M. That is the total mass of connecting rod. Into distance B. Upon the total length of the connecting rod. This we have already derived. So again I will not be deriving it here. So M is known which is 90, B is not known but we know the total length which is 450. So 450 minus 180 gives the value of B and the total length of connecting rod is 450. So MA is 54 kilogram. So if the mass at crank pin is 54 kilogram, the mass at gudgeon pin that means at point B will be 90 minus 54 that is 36 kilogram. So this is the extra mass added because of the connecting rod. So the total mass of reciprocating parts become initially it was 120 kilogram. Now addition is of 36 kilogram. So total mass becomes 156 kilogram. Now we'll find out the torque on the crankshaft, right? So the first component that we're taking is because of the reciprocating parts. Now we know that because the angle is less than 90 degree, the acceleration is towards right. So the inertia force will act in the direction opposite to F which is in the left direction. So this is the direction of inertia force. And the magnitude of acceleration, right? Because these are the reciprocating parts. So they are moving in with the linear acceleration is R omega square cos theta plus cos 2 theta upon n. This we have already derived while doing the analytical analysis of piston and the slider crank mechanism. So the inertia force becomes mass into acceleration. So it becomes m r omega square cos theta plus cos 2 theta upon n. So m is known, length of crank is known, omega is known, theta is known and n is known. We place all the values and we get 53490 Newton which is the inertia force and the inertia torque becomes F into perpendicular distance. So the formula is F into R. So this is the inertia torque because of the reciprocating parts. So it is F into R sine theta plus sine 2 theta upon 2 under root n square minus sine square theta. So we have calculated the value of the inertia force which is 54390 into uh, length of crank is known which is 90 mm 
theta is known, n is known. We place all the values and this is the inertia torque that we get which is 2826 Newton meter. And because this is the inertia, inertia torque, so its direction is opposite to the actual torque. So it will be in the counterclockwise direction. So because you see theta is 30 degree, that means the crank is moving from this inner dead center to the outer dead center position. So the direction of torque is in this direction and inertia torque will be in the counterclockwise direction. Now we know that the total torque at the crank pin or the crank shaft I should say is because of many factors. So one factor we have talked about which is the inertia torque because of the reciprocating parts. The other one is because of the correction couple which acts in the direction of the rotation of the crank. So if crank is rotating in clockwise direction correction couple will also act in the clockwise direction. So we know the formula for the correction torque which is equal to m that is the mass of connecting rod into alpha c which is the angular acceleration of connecting rod and the negative sign it shows that the sense of angular acceleration of rod is such that it tends to reduce the angle beta. In this case the crank is going in this direction. So the beta will keep on reducing therefore the sense of alpha is in negative direction right. So uh, to find the correction couple we need to know m which is already known alpha c we have to calculate b is known b is what the if this is the mass at point a and the mass at point b and this is the center of gravity g sorry center of mass g and this distance a which is known 180 mm and B we have to calculate and total length of connecting rod is known 450 so B becomes 270 mm. Now to find the equivalent length of the system now we have already discussed that this that to create the correction couple there are two dynamically equivalent systems in a connecting rod. So one is at the length of connecting rod in which two point masses are placed at two ends and one is at the equivalent length where we also have a point mass at a distance at a point D in such a way that B plus D it creates an equivalent length of the connecting rod. Now while doing the analysis we have already uh, calculated this that B into D is equal to K. Right? So, so while calculating the moment of inertia so M K square was equal to m into b into d so bd is equal to k square and we also know that b plus d is the equivalent length which is capital L. So by using these two equations we can find what is the capit, uh, capital L or the equivalent length which is b plus k square upon b. So b is known k is known so we can find the equivalent length which is of course a bit lesser than that of the length of connecting rod. So now we have to calculate alpha c to find the correction couple and alpha c is negative. I told you why it is negative because it is in the direction of reducing angle beta. So minus omega square sine theta n square minus 1 upon n square minus sine square theta 3 raised to the power 3 by 2. So we know omega theta is known and n is known. We place the values and this is the value of alpha c that we get. So the correction couple becomes 90 into alpha c into b which is 0.27 l that is the length of connecting rod minus equivalent length and this is the value of delta t that we get which is in the clockwise direction that means in the direction same as that of the rotation of the crank. Now because of this correction couple the correction torque that is produced on the crank shaft this also we have derived the equation it is equal to delta t that is the correction couple into cos theta upon under root n square minus sine square theta. All the values are known. We place the values and this is the value of the correction torque that we get. Now there is one more torque that is acting on the crank shaft which is because of the added or the extra weight added at the crank pin. Because what we are doing we are uh, distributing or we are like converting the mass of the connecting rod in two point masses. So one we have placed at A which is at the crank pin and one mass 
one portion of mass we have placed at B, which is the gudgeon pin. So because of this additional mass, a torque is being produced, which is equal to weight, which is M A into G into if this is the length of the crank, this distance, which is R cos theta. So theta is known, which is 30 degree. R is known. M A the mass at the the mass added at the crank pin. We are calculated in beginning. G is known. So this is the value of the torque that we get, and this torque is also in the direction opposite to that of the angular acceleration of the crank, right? So the total inertia torque on the crankshaft is this because the inertia torque is what the torque which is acting in the direction opposite to that of the angular acceleration. So this is Tb, which is the torque because of the reciprocating parts minus the correction torque the torque because of the correction couple or the correction moment plus the torque because of the weight of the additional masses at the crank pin so when we place the values so correction torque has to be deducted from the inertia torque so this is the resultant that we get which is in the counterclockwise direction 